So dear students, welcome to another lecture of uh, basic electrical engineering. In this particular lecture, we will discuss about the electrical machines. So this lecture is dedicated to the electrical machines. We will also uh, see how many types of electrical machines we have. And then we will understand the working principle of electrical machines. So to start with, what is an electrical machine? See, an electrical machine is uh, a machine which works in relation with the electrical energy. That means the machine in which somehow electrical energy is associated, electrical energy is involved, is termed as electric machine or electrical machine. As you can see here in these three diagrams, so you can observe one common thing in these three pictures. One is of generator, one is of transformer, another one is of motor basically. So these are the electrical machines, right? Now, two of them are rotating in nature. One, the transformer is a static machine. It does not rotate. That means it does not have any rotating or moving part in it. However, these two have the moving parts, the rotor, which we call as, right? So as you can see in this diagram, um, these three machines, these three equipment has have uh, one thing common and that is the electrical energy, right? So in electrical machines, the electrical energy is associated either at input or at output or on both sides. For example, in these through rotating machines, the electrical energy is available either at input or at output. But in case of a transformer, the electrical energy is available at input as well as at output. So such a machine we call as electrical machines, right? So uh, from these pictures, you could have understood that uh, uh, broadly, if we classify the electrical machines, so we have transformers, we have generators, we have electric motors, right? Okay, so let us go deep into the classification of the electrical machines. Now, electrical machines are broadly classified as the static machine, Right, so uh, static machines are those machines in which we do not have any moving part, for example, transformer. A transformer does not move, it does not rotate, it doesn't have any uh, rotating or moving part in it, right? It is a static device. It is placed at one place, one point, and it works as an interface between the transmission and distribution. Uh, circuit. So on the primary side, it has, it is connected to the transmission line. And on the secondary side, it is connected to the load or distribution side. Then the second broad category is the rotating machines. So rotating machines are those machines in which we have electromechanical energy conversion, E, M, E, C. So this is electro uh, mechanical energy conversion. That means such machines in which we have electrical to mechanical conversion or mechanical to electrical conversion, right? So if this process is involved in electrical machines, so we call such machines as the rotating machines or electromechanical energy conversion devices. So in this category, we have first the AC machine. So this category is based on the fact uh, that which type of electricity is involved in the working of this machine. As we know that we have AC supply and we also have DC supply. So if 
the ac supply is involved in the working of a rotating machine so we call such machine as the ac machine ac generator and or ac motor right so this ac machine is further has sub categories like we have synchronous machines synchronous machines are also known as the alternators that means these type of machines are uh, broadly used to uh, generate electricity okay so the second category of ac machines is the induction machines however transformers is also an ac machine but since it doesn't have any rotating part so it is not included in the rotating machine category so the second category of ac machines is the induction machines which is also known as the asynchronous machines then the another category which is based on the type of uh, supply involved is the dc machine so uh, in dc machines either dc generator or dc motor we have the unidirectional supply involved in the working of these machines dc machines are further categorized on the basis of how their field system is excited so in this category we have the separately excited dc machines and then we have the self excited dc machines now field system is basically responsible for the generation of the magnetic field so uh because uh these electrical machines they involve the electromagnetism in them right so um they have the field system which uh, generates the magnetic field so that these machines can operate these machines can work so if the uh, field system is excited separately now when we say excited so we actually mean to say that the field system is so it is field system is connected to an external voltage source so if this is the case that the field system is connected to some external voltage source so we call such uh, uh, dc machine as the uh, separately excited dc machine however if uh, field system is connected to the uh, supply within the machine that means uh, field system is excited with the voltage or current which is taken from within the machine itself so we call such machine or dc machine as self excited dc machine now the self excited dc machine further has a uh, significant category such as series wound dc machine then shunt wound dc machine and then we have compound wound dc machine although we will discuss these machines in uh, detail in uh, forthcoming lectures so let us proceed further and whatever we have discussed from this we have understood one thing that we are going to concentrate on the e m e c that is electro mechanical energy conversion okay so we will be discussing such machines only in this particular unit in which we have electricity to mechanical conversion and mechanical to electricity conversion so we mean to say that uh, electrical machines are basically or actually those machines which have the emc principle involved in them so these are two types first is in which we give some mechanical input 
and this is a generator to get some electrical output and then the second category is in which we give some electrical input which is nothing but a motor to get some mechanical output so as you can see here it is in a generator it is mechanical to electrical and here electrical to mechanical conversion is taking place okay so these are the electromechanical energy conversion devices because electromechanical energy conversion principle is involved in these machines rotating machines right uh so from this diagram you can understand it very easily that what is an electromechanical energy conversion uh, we have an electrical system which is used to provide some electricity to an electric machine to get some mechanical output omega this is nothing but um, rotations per minute that is uh, the speed the angular velocity of the machine and this is nothing but the torque right so similarly vice versa is also true that if you provide some mechanical input to an electric machine it will give you some electrical output so if we talk about the energy flow how the energy is flowing uh, so if it is from electrical energy to the mechanical energy we call it as motor and if it is the vice versa that is from mechanical energy to electrical energy we call it as generator and the power relation that is involved in these machines is vi vi is nothing but the electrical power and t omega is nothing but the mechanical power so it is both which are involved in the electrical machines or electromechanical energy conversion devices or machines right so uh, vi is associated with the generator and t omega is associated with the motor whether it is a generator or it is a motor both type of powers are involved in them then we have the working principle of electrical generators now generator is an electrical machine which converts the mechanical input into the electrical output as we have already discussed in our previous slide right so uh, these are certain statements about the electrical generator now it works on the principle of which is very important to for you to know that is it works on the principle of electromagnetic induction and what does it mean it means that it, or it states that when we have any conductor which is placed in the magnetic field if we have a conductor and let us say this is the magnetic field b and we have a conductor here right so this conductor when placed in the magnetic field and this conductor is in motion so this conductor will have an emf induced on it which is given by e is equal to minus d phi by dt or if we have n number of conductors then it would be minus n d phi by dt right so a uh, negative sign as you all know that it indicates the opposition caused by the induced emf to its cause which is the flux or the rate of change of flux right so this is what uh, electromagnetic induction principle or we can say faraday's law of electromagnetic induction principle state so this gives us a generator action so we we must have uh, the magnetic field we must have uh, a conductor and there shall be a relative movement between these two they must have a relative movement so it means that uh they should not be static or they should not be moving with the same velocity in the same direction otherwise the relative velocity relative movement between these two would be zero and hence we will not have any d phi by dt 
so there will not be any emf okay so now the another thing which is very important is how will you find out the direction of induced emf in this particular conductor this is very important so the direction of the emf which is induced in the conductor can be uh, determined by using fleming's right hand rule and fleming's right hand rule is that if we have a conductor okay so this is a conductor as you can see here this is a conductor which uh, uh is placed in the magnetic field here right this is the magnetic field these two magnets are uh, symbolically representing the magnetic field and the magnetic field direction is from north to south and the motion is in this particular direction right so if you place all your thumb the four finger this one and the middle finger perpendicular to each other in the direction of the force means the thumb is placed in the direction of force and the four finger is placed in the direction of uh, magnetic field and this is placed in the direction of current uh, sorry this will give you the direction of current right so uh, this is how you can find out the direction of current or induced emf in the uh, conductor uh, in case of electrical generator right so fleming's right hand rule is used so if you want to remember how how uh, uh, you can know that which rule is used in generator so you can remember g in case of right so g for generator so this is how you can remember this particular rule that to find out the direction of induced emf fleming's right hand rule is used and in this how will you uh, place your fingers thumb four finger and middle finger you will put your thumb in the direction of the rotation of the coil right and then you will place your four finger in the direction of the uh, uh, magnetic field so your middle finger will give you the direction of current or emf induced in the conductor then second we have electrical motor so as Uh, we have already discussed that electrical motors are those mo those electrical machines which convert electrical input or electrical energy into mechanical energy that is the electrical input to the mechanical output right so in this also uh, we have certain statements so uh, what is the principle of working of an electrical motor unlike uh, an a generator uh, because motor is using the electricity to convert that electricity into the mechanical output so that means we already have the conductors of the motor which are carrying current so now when we place any conductor which carries current so we don't have to find out the direction of current here because current is already given to the conductor okay so if we have a uh, a uh, conductor which carries certain current i and it is placed in some magnetic field so this particular conductor will experience a force so as far as motor is concerned whether it is a dc motor or it is an ac motor the working principle for both is same there is no difference in that okay so, and that principle or that uh, rule on which the working of electric motor is based is that when we place a current carrying conductor in the magnetic field so this conductor which is placed in the magnetic field and carrying some current will experience a mechanical force or an it will experience a mechanical force which we call as torque right so uh, this is what the motor action is movement mechanical output okay so electricity is already given as an input to the conductor but what we are getting at the output we are getting a mechanical force so this is the mechanical output so we get some rotations we get a movement of the conductor right so uh, this is the motor action now if you want to know that how the direction of this force can be obtained how the direction of this mechanical force can be determined so for that we have fleming's 
left hand rule so fleming's right hand rule is used to determine the direction of current or emf induced in the conductor of an electric generator however fleming's left hand rule is used to find out the direction of rotation of the electric motor that in which direction the electric motor will start rotating once we have placed the current carrying conductor in the magnetic field so let us consider that there is a magnetic field so these two magnets are symbolically representing the magnetic field so the direction of magnetic field is this and this is a conductor which is already carrying some current in this particular direction so if you put uh, your middle finger in the direction of current if you put your four finger in the direction of magnetic field so the thumb will give you the direction of motion so the one thing which is common here is that in right hand rule also the thumb is placed in the direction of motion four finger is placed in the direction of magnetic field and the middle finger gives us the direction of current however here the middle finger because conductor is already carrying the current so middle finger is placed in the direction of current four finger is placed in the direction of magnetic field and hence the thumb will give us the direction of the force that is the direction in which the motor will start rotating that can be determined by using fleming's left hand rule now how to remember uh, these two rule so let us write uh, fleming left hand rule so this is for motor right and then we have a generator so fleming's right hand rule so as you can see in generator we have two r so fleming right hand rule there are two r's okay so in motor we have only one r so fleming left hand rule one r r the alphabet so this is how you can remember this is a trick to remember that which rule is used in which electric machine to find out the direction of current or force mechanical force right so this is a trick you can note it down if you want to apply this you can apply okay so this is totally up to you now because in this particular unit we will be discussing about the machines the rotating machines actually so uh, whatever we have discussed is summarized here in this particular slide so we have ac machines so ac machines are those machines in which we uh, have the ac supply involved either at input or at output so we have ac generator and then we have ac motor right so ac generators are also known as alternators so alternators are those machines or electrical machines or ac machines which convert mechanical energy into bidirectional that is ac electricity and since and ac motors are those electrical machines or ac machines which uh, take ac supply at input and convert that same supply into the mechanical energy then the second category which is based on the supply is dc machine and dc machines can also be understood in the similar manner however only the difference is that instead of bidirectional we have a unidirectional electricity involved which we call as dc so a dc generator is something which converts the mechanical energy into the unidirectional electricity so it is that electrical machine which is converting the mechanical input to the uh, dc output dc electricity then the dc motors are those uh, electrical machines or dc machines which uh, work on which operate on dc supply and convert that dc supply dc electricity into uh, the equivalent mechanical power mechanical energy so as you can see in these two animations we have a dc generator and we have an ac generator this is this is put just to make you understand 
uh, in DC generator, as you can see, we have the, uh, these are known as uh, split rings, right? And here we have these, which we call as slip rings. And here you can see, we have the bidirectional electricity involved. So it is changing its direction with the rotation, with each rotation of the coil. So this is a coil which is rotating in the magnetic field and that the direction of magnetic field is this. Okay, similarly here, the direction of magnetic field is this, this one for north to south. And again, we have a coil rotating in the magnetic field. Okay, so it gives us a unidirectional output and this AC generator gives us a bidirectional output. So this is it for today's lecture and thank you so much.